Princeton, New Jersey to meet with Peter Sarnak. He's a specialist in number theory and winner of the Mathematical Sciences Award. He's receiving the Shaw Prize for his arithmetic theory of thin groups and the development of the affine sieve. Every morning, mathematician Peter Sarnak likes to go for a walk in the neighborhood. It's a part of his exercise routine. In the last 20, 30 years, <laughs> I try to swim every day. Firstly, uh, I find that it helps me think clearly. I like to think it's healthy. I, I don't swim that long, but by swimming, as long as you think it's good, it's good. <laughs> so it puts me in a better mood also. After the swim, Peter goes to Princeton University to work on mathematics. He fell in love with the subject during his undergraduate days. And the minute I saw the kind of problems that people attack, how they attack them, how they think about them, how, how beautiful proofs can be, how imaginative an idea can come from out of left field, uh, this was, I was, let's say, smitten and uh, I've never really looked back. He received a bachelor's degree in mathematics at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa and went to Stanford University for graduate school to study with the mathematician Paul Cohen. He solved the first of Hilbert's problems that were posed in 1900 um, in a completely revolutionizing set theory, an absolute genius. And I'd heard that he was somebody who was still extremely exciting and active and was encouraged to go work with him. I got there, he was a very he, competitive guy, but a very inspiring person. He had no field, he was just trying to attack the hardest problems. Like his mentor, Peter is an expert in many mathematical fields, including number theory and the study of the distribution of prime numbers is a core topic in number theory. A prime number is divisible by one and the number itself. Almost primes and sieve methods are the foundations of Peter's work. A sieve is a procedure to count prime numbers. A simple sieve comes from the Greeks. The first number on the list, which is two, this is what the process of the sieve, the first step in a sieve is, I strike out all the numbers which are multiples of two. So I start off with two and I strike out four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and then I see that three has been omitted and that's my next prime number three. And I now do the same thing, I strike out all multiples of three. So three, three times two is six. Now I go back to the beginning. So I've got two and three, and the first number that I don't see is five. That's the next prime. Now I strike out the multiples of five, so that's five times two is ten. So this process of striking out the numbers leaves you with the primes. And I think that's where the term sieve comes from, that you sieve by striking out what's left over after you've done the sieve are the prime numbers. The sieve method can be applied in Apollonian circle packings, a type of geometry. Apollonius was a Greek mathematician who worked with circles. And it all begins with the Apollonius theorem. So R is the radius, and I won't use the radius much. One over R, one over the radius, one over the radius is a new name. It's called the curvature. And these three circles are tangent, mutually tangent. They touch exactly at one point like that. Then his theorem says there are exactly two circles in the world that are tangent to all three. Yeah, that's a lovely theorem of Apollonius. If we use Apollonius theorem to continue filling in new circles or packing new circles, that's an Apollonian circle packing. So I start off with some arrangement of circles where the curvatures are whole numbers. So I want whole numbers. If I want to look for prime numbers, it's about whole numbers. Number theory is about whole numbers. Saudi, a chemist, observed that. 
We start with the four circles. If their curvatures are whole numbers, then forever all the other curvatures are whole numbers. Researchers from Bell Labs raised many interesting questions related to the number theory of circle packings. Including um, which integers occur here, which prime, are they prime numbers, and um, once I learned of their work, and we, uh, Gumbert and uh, myself had already developed the rudiments of the affine sieve and various other tools that we had worked on, we could answer many, many of their questions. And I was able to prove there are infinitely many circles in any Apollonian packing which are prime numbers. So you can see here a few of them, and you keep on going, the circles get very, very small, and the curvatures get very, very big. And you will find, it's a theorem, that there are infinitely many which are prime. Descartes' equation shows a relation between the curvatures of four mutually tangent circles. So the question is, if I have four mutually tangent circles with curvatures x1, x2, x3, x4, is there some relation between these numbers? And this is Descartes' equation. So this is the master equation which the four must satisfy. And this is also the equation from which you learn that if you start off with four which are whole numbers, then forever you will get whole numbers. And you produce the new solutions from the old solutions by flipping as I was filling in the holes. That flipping in operation, when you do it on these coordinates, is an affine motion. That's where the word affine comes from. Each time Descartes' equation is used to get a new set of curvatures, that's an affine motion. The sieve part of this is, remember when we started out with the sieve, we said we do some complicated inclusion, exclusion. So now we have to do striking out, putting back, striking out, putting back with these moves, with these formulae of affine transformations, which is entirely new. A thin group is a subgroup where you are only getting a few of the transformations, not all the moves. So you are handicapped in what you can do. And to do something with thin groups is what the new feature was. So each step here is fundamentally new, so one has to invent new tools. And uh, we were able to do that together with many people. The Apollonian circle packing is the simplest example of Peter's theory. The invention of the affine linear sieve and the theory of thin groups are the reasons why Peter Sarnak is receiving the Shaw Prize in mathematical sciences. The theory was developed in collaboration with Alex Gumbert and Jean Brigan. How can thin groups and the affine sieve be used in real life? There's quantum computing you wear it is actually used to make optimal golden gates and uh, in, to make fast circuits in quantum computation. His original and Deep Vision has launched a vast research program that brings together number theory, combinatorics, analysis, dynamics, geometry, and spectral theory. So many of those applications uh, are uh, someone taking a particular instance of the affine sieve um, analyzing it in greater detail. There's extra ingredients uh, involved that you can make use of to get more information out of that setting to prove a particular application. When Peter is not developing new math, he likes to help his graduate students on their areas of expertise. And the, there's nothing more pleasurable than um, watching problems be solved. Of course, it's even more pleasurable if you played a critical role in the student solving the problem. And his graduate students like working with him too. The main thing that jumps out at you is his enthusiasm. So when I first met him, I was trying to choose who would be my advisor and which university to go to. And um, he met me for like 45 minutes and you know he asked me what I was interested in and then for the next like 40 minutes he was just telling me all of the interesting things that I could do with it. Hey, how are ya? Hi. How's it going? Peter's daughter is on the Princeton campus to work on a musical. She is a songwriter and has a flair for math, just like her father. 
My dad, I think, led by example. He was so passionate and is so passionate about his work. Um, so he never was punitive or said, you better get straight A's, but it was inspiring because you want to do as well as he has done, but in your own field. Back home, Peter and his wife enjoy barbecue dinners. Helen is a professor of information science. She's thrilled that her husband is receiving the Shaw Prize. I felt so overjoyed that he was recognized for this, for just, you know, being a mathematician, um, representing the field so well, loving the work that he does, having so many students that he has helped through their careers. And Peter's motivation for working on great math if you want to be a mathematician, research mathematician, you must be willing to be frustrated 99% of the time because you're stuck. If you're not stuck, you're trying to do something that's too easy and that gives you no satisfaction. Your reward is once in every few years where you have a marvelous idea in it. and then the high is so high it'll carry you for another 10 years. So I do have some things that I'm hoping to have a few more highs. 